are continuing on 2.1, find square roots and compare real numbers. We've already worked on comparing real numbers, looking at the real number system and what it means to be a non-perfect square versus a perfect square. We talked about rational and irrational numbers. We talked about roots in the previous class and what it means to be a root. Again, putting our real numbers into the correct categories. Uh, whole numbers, integers, irrational numbers, rational and real numbers. We compared them on number lines and with the inequality signs. And now we're working on real number properties. The commutative property is about order. The commutative property of addition says that if I have a plus b, that is the same as b plus a. It also works for multiplication, where I could say a times b equals b times a. 2 plus 3 is exactly the same thing as 3 plus 2. Or 4 times 5 is exactly the same thing as 5 times 4. The associative property is about grouping. We use parentheses to associate and group numbers together. The order is not changing at all, but if I group A and B, and then I add C, that will be the same thing if I group B and C, and then add A. This would also be true of multiplication. I could start by grouping A and B. A times B times C is the same thing as A times B times C. This can also be seen using real numbers. Here I get, I have to start with parentheses from order of operations, PEMDAS. One plus two is three, so I have three plus three is six. If I look over here, I would have three plus two is five, plus one is six. So I'm getting six for both of them. And again, this would also be true for multiplication. I would start with parentheses. 2 times 3 is 6, times 4 is 24. Starting with parentheses, 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is also 24. The identity property is about getting back what you started with. How do I get back a number? What could I add to A that's going to give me A back? I could add 0. A plus zero is still A. Well, what about multiplication? What could I multiply to A and still get back A? I could multiply one. The identity property is about getting back what you started with. I am what I am and nothing else. We have the inverse property The inverse property is when it's addition, we're saying the opposite. Well, what is the opposite of A? I could add to that negative A, and it would give me zero. So when it's addition, we're thinking of the word opposite. But when it's multiplication, we think of something else. Um, starting with A, and I would multiply by the reciprocal, flip it, 1 over A. And this gives me an answer of, if I make this a fraction, my A's would cancel, and that would give me 1. 1 times 1, 1 times 1. Multiplication, you use the reciprocal. And you get an answer of 1. When it's addition, you're using the opposite, and you're getting an answer of 0. When we're solving equations moving forward in 2.1, we use the opposite to undo adding and subtracting. We use the reciprocal to undo multiplication. The distributive property is one of the most widely used properties throughout math. If 
I have a times b plus c, I need to distribute the a onto the b and onto the c. And how we do that is we multiply. a times b is ab plus a times c is ac. I can see that my b plus c has now have the a distributed onto them. Check your understanding. Use the properties to show that each of the equations is true. Justify each step. I could start by doing some regrouping here. I have A times, there's a 1 in front of the A, that's 1 third. And this would be still the associative property. I'm just regrouping in here. I could also um, use the commutative property and switch these two. One third times A. Again, if I make A a fraction over one and I multiply straight across, A times one is still A, one times three is still three. That would have been the commutative property that I just used. Commutative property of multiplication. I need to make sure that I'm using the words of multiplication or of addition. I could use the associative property and put together six times one third times a equals two a was the associative property of multiplication. And then I could finish multiplying six times one third, make it a fraction, cross cancel, and you get two. Two a equals two a. Over here, I could regroup. Let's see. We could do a plus b minus c equals a plus b minus c. That would be the associative property of addition. I would like to put my A next to this A because they're like terms and I can add A's with other A's. We use the commutative property, commutative property of addition. Now I'm going to regroup 7A and 5A the associative property, it's the associative property of addition. And then I'm just going to add 7a and 5a to get 12a plus 4 equals 12a plus 4. Go ahead and pause the video and test your skill to see if you know your properties, your real number properties. Okay, let's test and see how you did. 11 plus 0 equals 11. Identity. I'm getting back what I started with. This would be the identity property of addition. Additive identity. Match each expression with one of the properties. So none of these should be repeating. I see x, y, z, x, y, z. The order hasn't changed. I see that first we're grouping y and z, and then it's switched to grouping x and y. So it's not about order. It's about regrouping. That's going to be the associative property of multiplication. Associative property of multiplication. I am adding the opposite to 8 and getting 0. That is going to be the additive inverse. 14 plus 20, 20 plus 14. The order has switched. That would be commuting. Commutative property of addition. 2 times a half. A half is the reciprocal of 2. So I'm multiplying by the reciprocal to get 1. That is going to be the multiplicative inverse. 22 times 1 gives me 22 back. Identity, I'm getting back what I started with, and I'm multiplying by 1. That is going to be the identity property of multiplication. Multiplicative identity.
1912 8 1912-8 is not about the order i see first 19 and 12 are being grouped and then it switches to 12 and 8 that would be the associative property of addition a times 9 equals 9 times a the order has changed a9 9a that's commuting commutative property of multiplication 7 times 4 plus 11 7 times 4 plus 7 times 11. That is the distributive property. Use the properties of real numbers to help simplify each expression mentally. Well, I always look for things that add up to tens or quarters. I see 15 and 5 is 20, 39. I would want to regroup on this to be 15 plus 5 using the associative property. Here, I'd like to see 50 cents and 950 together, so I'm going to use the commutative property, and I'm going to switch these two numbers. Plus 0 0.5, and then 11.49. 950 and 50 is 10, 20, 149. I would like to group these two numbers together, so I am going to use the commutative property to switch these. Negative 0 0.50 plus 0 0.50 plus 9.89. So I use the commutative property to switch them and then regrouping them. This is zero, so that leaves 989. Uh, 23 minus 3 would be good. That would leave me 20. So I'm going to regroup this. 23 minus 3 is 20, plus 48 would be 68. I would like to regroup this so that I can have quarters times 4 to give me an even 100. And then 100 times 9 would be 900. I would like to group these together. That's 40. 4 times 6 is 24, so 40 times 6 would be 240. Go ahead and pause the video and practice a couple of the distributive property, multiplying the first term outside the parentheses times the term on the inside and then doing it again. Okay, let's see how you did. 3 times x is 3x plus 3 times 8 is 20. It can also be on the back side. So 7 times 5b is 35b. And then 7 times negative 4 is negative 28, keeping the signs in front of your terms. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 7 is positive 28. 12 times 3 is 36. Positive times a negative is going to be negative. If I make 12 a fraction, I can cancel my 6 in the denominator with 12 in the numerator. 6 goes into 6 once, 12 twice, so that would be 2 times negative 1t would be negative 2t. Negative 2 times t is negative 2d. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. Nine times h is nine h. Nine times negative three is negative twenty-seven. Three times four tenths. Well, three times four is twelve, and I need to have one decimal place in my answer, so that would be one point two. I'm going to just forget about the decimal for a second and do three times eleven c. Well, three times eleven c would be thirty-three c. And then I need one decimal place. So 33 would have one decimal place. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18a. Negative 2 times 9a is negative 18a. Negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. On the next problem, I am just multiplying by a negative. Negative times a negative is positive. Negative times a positive is negative. It's changing the signs on the inside. One thing that you should know is that there is also understood to be a 1 here. Negative 1 times negative x would be a positive x. 
and then negative 1 times 31 would be negative 31. It changed the sign of x to become positive, and it changed the sign of 31 to become negative 31. So negative times a positive 4x is negative 4x. Negative times a negative 12 is a positive 12. Simplify each expression, justify your steps. I would like to use the commutative property to put 4 and 8 next to each other. So I'm going to change the order. 8 plus 4 plus 9t. That was the commutative property of addition. And now I'll finish with 12 plus 9t. Again, I would like to put the 9 and 2 next to each other, so that would be 2 plus 9 plus 3x. And I just use the commutative property of addition. That would be 11 plus 3x. I cannot add variables with numbers. I can only add x's with x's, numbers with numbers, t's with t's, Go ahead and pause the video and try the last part. Okay, we see that we're adding zero. I started with H, I got H back. That would be the identity property of addition. Two times three equals three times two order commutative property. of multiplication. 4 plus the opposite of 4, that is the additive inverse. One, two, three, one, two, three. The order hasn't changed. I see 1 and 2 are being grouped together, and then it switches to 2 and 3. Associative property of addition. Comparing real numbers, negative 4, how does that compare to negative 1? Is it greater than negative 1, less than negative 1, or equal? I look on the number line, here's negative 4, here's negative 1. Negative 4 is getting smaller, so I would say negative 4 is less than negative 1. And that's how you would do this one. You're going to order your numbers on the number line. And here you are going to order numbers on a number line. You're just going to move these over and put them in order of how they go. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2 but it's going to be a negative 2, so this would be smaller. So this is really negative 2. Is there anything smaller than negative 2? And then negative 1. And then 0. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. So this would go next. And then 3 would go last. I can, if you're interested, I can click off to the side and run this cursor over them, clicking down and dragging. It highlights them all together. I can go to arrange and align to the bottom. I could also arrange and distribute them equally horizontally if I'm looking to make my answers neat. If not, that's fine as well. There you go. Command Z to undo all of that. All right, the next one and the last one is your properties 3105, 3105. I see the order hasn't changed. First, I'm grouping 10 and 5, and then it switches to 3 and 10. That is the associative property of addition. You need to make sure you have both of them there. And that's how you do this page.